plastic. It was the miracle material that transformed the way people bought products. Advertisements in the 1950s read, amazing new plastic wrap, and the best things in life come in cellophane. The material was aimed at everyone to use. So parents had their products wrapped in plastic, children had their candy wrapped in plastic, and the material was cheap. Being a cheap, versatile, and strong material, it starts to infiltrate every aspect of our lives. Medicine, clothes, hygiene, and even our diet, considering how it's present in certain foods. On July 19, 2017, Science Advances announced that 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic has been produced since the 1950s. 8.3 billion metric tons is the same as 1 billion elephants or 25,000 Empire State Buildings. 60% of that amount has ended up either in a landfill or polluting the environment. And half of the 8.3 billion metric tons was only produced in the last decade. According to the United Nations Environmental Program, one million plastic bottles are purchased per minute. That is equivalent to 20,000 plastic bottles being purchased per second. And as I was finishing up, 140,000 plastic bottles were sold. Now plastic is detrimental to our environment. That is very much clear. Ocean Conservancy, an environmental group in the US, announced that 8 million metric tons of plastic is floating the world's oceans. And did you know that according to Ellen MacArthur Foundation, there will be more plastic than fish in the sea by 2050? Plastic has very negative impacts for our environment, especially destroying marine life and their habitat. There are hundreds of videos online of how whales and turtles are suffering. We have created so much plastic that the estimated surface area of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is 1.6 million square kilometers, an area almost three times the size of France. But what if plastic wasn't the problem? We have to give the material credit for improving many aspects of our lives. Being durable and light, plastic has developed electronics, infrastructure, and many other fields. What's more important is realizing plastic is produced for a reason, such as its quality or its price. People nowadays often buy and then just carelessly throw away plastic products. We are over-consuming and perpetuating this endless cycle of buying products and then easily disposing of this. And our, the cycle exists due to our consumerist society, where it's easy to buy a new product to replace the old. We say, just throw away that trash, but it never actually goes away. It simply moves somewhere else, resulting in environmental problems such as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch and other plastic accumulation zones like it would not have existed if people would not have produced and consumed 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic. We need to improve the way we manage and consume our plastic in order to slow down the production of plastic. So is plastic ruining the environment or are we allowing it to do so? Or is it both? I would say that people are the problem. We need a whole new approach to plastic. How we use it, how we manage it, and how we recycle it. Because we're, the way we're doing it now is unsustainable, as most of it ends up in the environment. Yet, there still is hope. With a mind shift, people can find a solution. And thankfully, there are a number of countries that have already started to take action. Uzbekistan, for example, while well, it does not have an official recycling system, citizens have created both paper and plastic recycling stations. Recently, our largest grocery store chains, Krasinka and Macro, have started to charge small fees for plastic shopping bags. And even though it's only a few hundred soon, it still allows the consumer to decide whether they really need that plastic bag rather than having the choice made for them. 
On a global level to combat plastic pollution, the European Parliament and corporations that produce about 20% of the plastic packaging waste around the world have, com have agreed to completely ban single-use plastic products. There are a number of cities in the United States, such as Boston, Seattle, and San Francisco, as well as countries around the world, such as India, Chile, and Kenya, that have completely banned plastic bags. And we must continue to take action in order and find new solutions to combat the production of plastic. We can't just take away all the plastic that has been created, but we can take action to make sure we don't continue to overconsume. Recycling cannot be the only answer, as all types of plastic can't be recycled, and only 9% of plastic has been recycled. It is about supply and demand. We need to decrease the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied through banning and reducing. Through banning and reducing. Replacing plastic with other materials may lead to environmental impacts that could end up being worse. So we can only make serious inroads by adding regulations and laws so that people don't continue to overconsume plastic. People are the ones causing the plastic pollution. We are addicted to plastic. So we have to be the ones to take action. So now you may be asking, what do we do to combat the problem? The answer lies in small steps that we can take in our everyday life, beginning with understanding that each small step makes a huge difference. And it really comes down to reuse, reduce, and recycle. The next time you go shopping, think about whether you really need the product, how you will reuse the product, and then in the end, how you'll pass it on for somebody else to use or recycle it. Another concrete way to change is to just say no to single-use plastic products. Choose to change your everyday plastic products into ones that are reusable. So that means bring your own reusable water bottle, start using bamboo toothbrushes, and choose to change your plastic packaged shampoo into shampoo bars that are not wrapped in plastic. Just like the United Nations Environmental Program said, if you can't reuse it, then refuse it. If you're unsure of the environmental impact of your actions, then find out the facts, learn about the impact, and act based on what would lead to the smallest impact on the environment. Really take steps to limit your consumption and reuse your product. In the end, our actions will make the greatest difference on what happens to our environment, since in fact, it is the way we use and consume plastic that is the overriding problem causing the massive plastic pollution affecting our planet.